Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So before we start, I'm gonna make a quick note. If you want, you can skip it. I'll put a timestamp, so if you don't care, whatever. Basically, I'm in another bathroom, but I have officially moved in, which means that normalcy should return at some point. I have my background, I have my lighting. The issue is my furniture is in here, so every room is super echoey. Like I realized probably this one is too, but since bathrooms are smaller, I feel like the echo is more contained. So you might see me in a few more bathroom type style things, um, just because I know echo can be really annoying and this is my only way of minimizing it for now, but hopefully, Unlike last time, the movers won't take two months to deliver my furniture. Yay! Okay, anyway, so today we're gonna to be talking about a musician named Mr. Kitty. So Mr. Kitty is an Austin-based musician. His real name is Forrest Avery Carney. And he basically went viral for one song called After Dark, and that's really what put him on the map. He's part of the quote-unquote goth and synth pop scenes and he has 1.3 million monthly Spotify listeners. So basically what happened is that Mr. Kitty put an apology on Twitter because he had been talking, talking is a loose way of saying it, he'd been sexting with a minor. So basically he put up an apology on Twitter explaining the situation, but the way in which she explained the situation is not in line with what the minor has said about this, and it's just very difficult to believe in my opinion, but regardless, we'll go over that later. A couple years back, I took a break from music, and it's time that I say why. Before my break, I was going through a rough time in my life, and I decided to seek validation online. First red flag, I think everyone to some extent seeks validation online. Like when you put up a selfie, nobody hopes that someone says, oh, you look like shit, you know? But I think there's a healthy level of being like, oh, that's a nice comment versus needing it as opposed to appreciating it. Anyway, I chose to go through my DMs and have conversations with my fans to seek validation. One person struck a nerve with me and we started talking for a couple of days. I began to develop feelings for this person and the conversation turned explicit. A while after we had been talking, he revealed that he was a minor. I broke down. This was the lowest moment of my entire life, and I tried to kill myself that night. I didn't know what to do. Should I just slowly end this communication, or do I block him now? I felt like not only did I just ruin a minor's life, but my husband's as well. I chose to end the conversation slowly while seeking help for my depression and deal with all the damage that I had caused for multiple people. I thought I was in a better place today, I fell to that place again. I thought I should reach out to the victim to apologize again, and it was devastating to know how much my actions have hurt them and continue to hurt them. Yes, I should ask for their age, but that is no excuse for my actions. I'm coming forward so that no one sends them hate, and hopefully I can continue to see what I have done on my own part. I'm not only asking for y'all to forgive me, but asking that you please respect the people I have hurt in this process. I will be taking another break to seek some more help. I love you so much and I'm sorry. And this was posted on the 26th of June. There's a lot to unpack here and the main reason I say that is because there is a screen recording that I will put in after this. I'm not gonna go through what they said to each other. You can just watch and come to your own conclusions but it definitely was explicit. There's no doubt of that. What happened, just to give a little context before I put the screen recording, is that he, Mr. Kitty, sent this individual, the 15 year old, a, I don't know if it was a dick pic, I don't know, because you can't see the pictures, thank God, but he sent some kind of explicit photo, and then the person said, guess my age, or something along those lines, and then it came out that he was 15, and then after that, they continued talking because the 15 year old, being a 15 year old, was just like, no, it's fine if we keep talking. I won't tell anyone about this because not many people know what predators look like and predator tactics. So obviously nothing is their fault, but they said, yeah, this was okay. And so then Mr. Kitty continued to message them really explicit shit, including videos, photos, whatever. So initially part of what he said is true. Like initially he did not know allegedly that the kid was 15, but the kid did say they were 15 pretty much 
immediately and it still continued. There's also the fact that why are you sending explicit pictures when you don't even know who you're talking to? Like sending explicit pictures is risky to begin with because especially being a public figure, you don't want to be just sending shit to anyone without even checking their age, checking anything about them because it could just be at best leaked. At worst, your pedophilia jumps out. So I, okay. Let's just move on. I'll put the screen recording here. So then there's an article, I'll link below. The victim, their name obviously isn't released because they are not adult yet, but the victim gave this publication a bit of a summary of what happened. A lot of it is a rundown basically of what you saw in their messages, like kind of what was said, the explicitness of it all, so on and so forth. So if you wanna see everything the victim said, I'll link it down below. This was in a very important part that I did wanna highlight though. It says, and this is from the victim, all of the seriousness of the situation came up to my mind in 2020 when I had a breakdown and I had my first real relationship. In April of 2020, he sent me, he being Mr. Kitty, his last sex tape with another person and asked if I was interested in sharing nudes. After my response, he deleted that video and texted, okay. I'm 17 now and two years after I shared this story because I accidentally told someone I chatted with Mr. Kitty in 2019 and they asked for details. Even the situation took place a long time ago, I still get grossed out because of this. When people started to find out all the details, I was told that it's my fault, that I made him do this and that I didn't mention my age. Everybody defended him saying that he can change, but I don't believe that. His apology is just to try to save his career and I'm glad people helped me by sharing this story. So I found this statement particularly sad simply because it's an iteration of what we already know. We already know that many teenagers, especially younger teenagers who are groomed, who are manipulated by pedophiles, don't know that it's wrong while it's happening. And then there's this, oh shit moment of realization. I think that's, that's just heartbreaking because it's, it's like you, it's like they have this trauma twice, kind of like an, a trauma you don't realize you had. And then the realization and those two things are very difficult to manage. So I feel really bad for this teenager. I can't begin to explain how long it took for me to get back to an okay place. And some sometimes it still fucks me up, but the moment you realize that is not just like, oh fuck, it's more like, you realize it and then it, you just have to sit with it or process it. And if you're lucky, you can go to therapy and stuff like that. But I just wanna underline how difficult it is to realize that you were taken advantage of and let alone with this situation, like I said, uh, you were taken advantage of by an idol. <laughs> I have no words. Either way, Mr. Kitty has been absent from social media since this Twitter apology as far as I've seen. Another thing to be noted is that he was booked for shows in LA. I think there was a show in another state. I can't remember. It's not really that important, but he's starting to be dropped. And actually his own label wants to 
separate themselves from him because of this. So I do think that there, there is going to be a certain level of consequence. I don't know if it's going to turn legal, who knows, but there is a career consequence already in motion here, which doesn't solve any problems. It doesn't unhurt the victim, but at least there is some level of consequence, which sadly is pretty rare these days. So I am just glad that that's in motion. I hope the victim is healing. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you'd heard about Mr. Kitty before, I personally had not before researching this entire situation. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time, probably in the same bathroom.